Travel in the dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the four five on the wet side. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Young Closer Podcast. It's your host, Jacob Hagerman. Guys, before we begin the show, make sure you shoot me a follow on the Instagram, at The Real Young Closer. That's where we keep all updates and everything special going on inside my life, the Elliott Group, and everybody that's associated here, some of the wins that we get all, all day. But uh, guys, number one, I got somebody special here in the house, as you can tell. It's somebody that has been on the episode in the past. We got Danny Klein. Danny, number one, give a little introduction where they can find you on the gram and social media, man. What's up, family? It's good to be back on here, man, chopping it up with my OG, Jacob Hagerman. If you guys haven't seen me on the gram, on Facebook, you guys can follow me at official Danny Klein on Instagram. Also, just launched YouTube. We're blowing up there. A lot of behind the scenes. Yeah, man, go follow cool this man there. Make sure you go tap subscribe. in on put, there, Put too. the notification bell on, man. Stop, stop missing out on that. But, dude, my God. What a year. It's been a crazy one. Like, looking back, me and Jacob were chopping it up uh, in, in the office, and he was like, man, it's, I can't believe we're going on three years. And I was like, we're going on four, bro. Like, <laughs> like, man, I, like, I, I, I was literally, time, man. I was going back through making a little, you know, 2023 Instagram reel, and I'm just looking at some of the stuff back from January, February, March, April, just literally feels like it was not just this past year, but like two years ago. Yeah, dude. You know, and, and I think that... Just a lot to reflect on, you know. A lot to reflect on. A lot of a lot of good moments to really enjoy. A lot of and, pressure. Uh, a lot of pressure, man. You know, it went well, by fast. You well, know, it went by so fast. Like I, I, I was just, I was talking to a uh, on the audio cast, um, the last episode, the one one before this one. Um, pretty much was the audio cast, and I was like, man, like my first time public speaking and like traveling and training was January which was at Brian Benstock's. And then we went back again. Oh, good old Paragon yeah, Honda. Old, old Paragon Honda Acura. And uh, then I was sitting and I was like, man, dude, like all of the things that I've accomplished this year are crazy. Like when you look back at what this year really was, like let's just like like set sales and like business aside, bro. Do you remember Chinese balloon? The Chinese balloon over America? Barely. Yeah, that was this year. Bro, you remember the submarine? Oh, the submarine. Yeah, bro. That was this year. That's so weird to think about. Bro, this year was like five years put in the one. And I think I just completely like, because like the culture that we run in, like nobody watches the news and stuff like that. And like the Ukraine-Russia war, everything, like everything that's going on right now, like it all happened this year. And uh, I was sitting there and I was like looking back. I was like, dude, I think I totally just like dissociated with everything and like just focused on like winning, focused on the company, mm-hmm. culture, God you know, our clients, but I was just sitting there and I was like, dude, I cannot believe that it, it it was what it was. I've made like, I mean, it's just so weird. Like I think that I've made like probably five years of like regular people progress or 10 years, like just a ridiculous amount of progress in this last year. And that's why it feels like it's not only just been like one or two years, but like three or four. Oh, yeah. And just because you're like doing so much and you just are so focused on the on the day, on the week, on the month, and just making sure you're capitalizing and you're always pushing the needle. And then like, you know, and, and honestly too, like one thing I'm taking into 2024 is I, I want to be a little bit more like, you know, present in the moment, enjoy a little bit more of the yeah, process. We're, talk- we're talking about this. Because like, man, I've been fucking killing it. You know, but I look up, I'm like, dang, like I barely remember some of that shit because I was just so focused on the actual production, the actual call, and then you wake up and do it again. You stay in that grind. You're so busy that you forgot to be like, dang, like, let me check in with the fam. Let me check in with the team. Let me, dang, like, how, how I wonder how they are. And then just staying plugged into that because then you look up and it's like, dang, years have gone by and yeah. all you focus on is, is actually, you know, the business, but you didn't focus on all, the, all these other areas. And uh, yeah, I just want to be a little bit more uh, present, you know, because I, I was there, but, like, mentally – I just feel like I could be a little bit uh, more in depth uh, with people and the things, a little bit more like intentional. You oh, know? Yeah. Well, I mean, like I could I could say this last year alone, and like this this is like a big uh, a big thing that I'm really putting a lot of energy and and intention to is last year I made more money that last year than I did from 16 to the time be- like to the year before. Yeah, you know what I mean. In one year, and I was like, I was just sitting, I was like, oh my god, bro, like that is that is ridiculous. Like, am I proud that I made that money? Like, yes. Am I proud that I put in the grind? Yes. But 
it's always like the old saying, like everybody says, like oh, money doesn't make you happy and stuff like that. Like I kind of, I kind of got a first, like a first, like real life glimpse of it, where it's like you can go buy what you want, and you're just like, okay, cool. Like it's not, it's not new anymore. Like it's just like, oh, you want to go to the this nice steak dinner? All right, let's go. You want to go buy some Louis? Let's go. You want to go buy some, you know, Louboutins? Let's go. You want to go buy three new suits? All right, cool. And it's just like, wow, like, I, I always thought, like, oh, it must be nice. Like, oh, yeah, it's easy for you to say, you know, back a couple of years back when, you know, I was around people that had money like that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, it's easy for you to say. And then I had my first glimpse of it. And I was like, damn, dude, OK, like, I, I, I know what you mean now. And it, it's one of those deals where it's not about making the money. It's, it's what you do with it. That now, like, that's that's what my 2024 plan is, is like, what am I going to do with the money? Like, what am I going to like? What are, what are my experiences going to be? What are the memories going to be like? What are. You know, what are some of the things that, like, I'm going to be able to contribute to, like, bigger charitable causes, be able to mm-hmm. tithe a little bit more at church, you know. And I, I do those things already, but, like, how much further could I take that ball down the field? Yep. And for me, like, it, it was it was, it was a big eye-opener these past, like, probably three weeks I've been reflecting on this, you know, just kind of getting myself out of, like, this constant war mode and going, like, hey, like, what's the long-term play here? Cause like you can you can make the money, like you can hundred percent make it. You can do it year over year over year over year over year, but like at the end of the day, we're all gonna go to the grave. It was like um, going back to the conversation that we were having back in the office. It goes back to like you know what are you building? You know, it's a question I always ask myself. Is like I've always been like a, a long term player, and you got to win short term to be able to win long term. But I think if you always think, hey, is this a good decision or a bad decision? If you always use the framework of thinking. Like, will this pay off in the long term? If the answer is yes, it's generally going to be a good move. You know, a lot of people actually make moves that benefit more in the short term versus long term, which actually hurts them in the long term. And so, you know, just look at, like, you know, what am I building? What am I investing? Um, what am I saving? What am I building with the brand? What am I, like, what's the long term play? You know let's, let's, let's stick on that real quick because we've had, we've had a lot of guests on. And a lot of them are, you know, it's like, you know, like Rob Avery, famous. Like, we've had, you know, like Rio. I mean, great guy making a lot of money, doing very good things. But, you know, obviously a lot of my people that watch are, you know, around our age, you know, 23, 24, sometimes up to 30, 40, 50. But I want to know, like, what is, uh, like, what are some of the financial things that you're planning on doing or have been that that's like that, like, you're like, okay, that's long-term play for me. So there's a few things. So one is like a, I call it like a, like a midterm play, not like short-term, but not like long-term uh, to buy a house. What's your definition of midterm? Midterm is like six to twelve months. Okay. It's very very simple. Like just not not in the immediate week month or the next you know ninety days, but something just a little bit you know longer than that, right? Uh, so one of those for me is buying my first house. You know, I look at what I've done this last two years, and I'm like, damn, I probably could have bought like a house if not you know two or three houses. You know, and I could still get one at this moment right now. But I really want to do it the right way and get that first you know, like house under my under my belt, so I can start you know really building that portfolio there and just getting some real estate. So buying the first house here in the next uh, six months, um, I want to make my first uh, million in commissions in a in a calendar year, right? Cash like taxable everything. I want to save up. Um, I want half a million in the bank, liquid after all expenses. After, um, you know, investments, after bills, like just sh- straight liquid. See, a lot of people, they make a lot of money, but they also spend a lot of money. Hell and yeah. anybody that says they haven't been guilty of that is just a liar. Everybody goes through that phase. For the most part, we'll go through that phase. When I say a lot of money, I'm, I mean like minimum like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. You start to look at where could I be putting those, uh, putting that money in a, in a better place. So I want to be investing my money every single month into uh, into real estate, into investment accounts, buy my first house, uh, stack away uh, half a million dollars here in this this year. Not like on top of what I have, but just this this calendar year alone. Um, yeah, those are those are some of my immediate financial goals that I have for myself. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say this: I'm not a financial expert, by the way. Neither of us are. So at the end of the day, take this advice with a grain of salt. I mean. Do what you want with your money. It's, you know, it's yours. But, I mean, like, my my strategy uh, that I put into place was, I mean, it was three things primarily. Um, Most of it was, like, tax shelter. Like, my my 401K just made a big contribution to that. So then that way, you know, 
Save a, save a little bit of money from the old Uncle Sam. So you can't touch that shit, dog. Um, and then my permanent life insurance policy, like with a, it's like a stupid cash value, like yep. three mil, and that way I can like borrow against it after a certain period of time. And then I've got an investment account, so then that way I can just park some money for like you know the five year plan. Um, because I I think in all reality, a year is still short term, like a, like anything like back of the year is still short term. Mm-hmm. And then I think, you know, two to five is midterm and then five plus is a little bit long term thinking. Like that's that's yep. what mine and then like if you're talking See, my long term is like ten plus. Like ten plus years is my frame well, I, for long term. In a normal society, like if we go back ten years, yes, long term is ten plus. You go back five years ago, five years ago we didn't even know what COVID was. And so like look at how much Stuff the world does has changed faster. and evolved. The world is evolving faster to where long term plays like you have to shorten the time frame to do more because of how fast everything evolves and adapts. Mm-hmm. And so I think long term is five, like five plus. And um for for me it's just like, dude, take care of those accounts, like put as much into those as, as possible. And then, you know, obviously and I I say this on the podcast, I just I haven't met anybody like inside of like my personal network. Like I have one guy, um, Nick Johnson, like yep. with like when it comes to like Airbnbs and stuff like that. But, like, outside of him, like, I don't have anybody that's, like, super well in-depth, like, super qualified, like, to help me with, like, the real estate investment. And so, like, I'm a big believer of, like, hey, like, if I'm going to slide you some racks, uh, like, I want to have a, a higher level of trust than, like, 100%. just, like, an acquaintance. And, like, Nick's one of those guys, Sawyer, you know, up at uh, Northwestern Mutual. He's, he's our, our, you know, works works with us. And I was actually going to bring, I was going to bring something up. That's actually funny that you mentioned that because I was going to tie it back to something. Uh, have you read uh, Profit First? So I started reading it, and then I called them, and I said, I already have all this set up naturally between, like, all the accounts, yep. like, profit account, owner expense. I want to share that with these people. Accounts. So I was going on my phone, you know, for the people, uh, you know, wanting to stack some more money and put their money in, like, better places. If you guys haven't read uh, Profit First audiobook or at least, like, a, a YouTube summary of it, it basically tells you how to set up uh, your LLC and then how to structure all of your accounts inside, like, of your like of your bank of your business uh, LLC and it goes operating owners pay revenue account profit account tax account and basically it'll give you a good structure so if anybody a bonus account dog yeah for anybody that wants that to one. set aside you know for taxes for anybody that wants to structure themselves in the right way you know if you just have a straight like checking account and a savings account you're gonna spend it y- you're gonna spend it you're gonna think that you have more money than you actually do when right. you should be setting all of these aside and diversifying them for what what is your expense what does it cost you have employees do you have overhead you know or maybe you're a salesperson that's making six figures you need to make sure that you section it out and set yourself up for success even if it's um even if they're labeled differently you know you may not actually have a, a true like operating account meaning you're not spending a lot of uh, outbound cash to be able to operate what you're doing but you should section those off into somewhat of a of a similar fashion so that you can yeah save right. the right way it feels nice and you start to realize once I mean, you I've, diversify I've, I've, that money. I've got six accounts. Yep. Like six six little places where I park it. And I got, like the cool thing is is, you know, obviously like you know what you're gonna get paid, you know, here in the LA group, like whenever, you know, the tenth comes. Like that's that's you know, commissy day. Yeah. And because um, you, you get your washouts, you know what it is, like boom, you're good, you're ready to roll. And um dude, the, like my favorite thing to do is simply like look at what where I'm at for comparative to last month and like I always look at it like oh well hey listen like I, I spent a little bit much in this account and then like go find it like okay where did I overspend or like hey like I actually have some free assets that I, I've, I allocated to this account I actually can allocate a little bit less and still have that same amount and now I've got free money that I can just put straight into an investment and that's what I've been doing you know pretty heavily here you know the past I, I'd say the back half of 2023 uh, yeah from June from June on so when Uncle Sam usually knocks on your door what June on? <laughs> yeah, from June on is when he starts tapping in. Yeah, he's like, "Hey, bro." Well, I mean, I've I've done I've done. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I know this. I've done everything pretty well to tax plan for the last uh, last ninety days. Pretty solid. So we're we're, we're already good. Let's take this conversation into a direction of like twenty twenty four uh, business planning uh, for all the people out there that are trying to like you know set up their year for success. On the time of shooting this podcast, it's the second. Right, it's a Tuesday. And if you don't have your business plan put in place, if you don't have your goals, yeah, if you don't have everything set in place, then 
it's time. Like it's already the second. Or if you have a, a business plan, you got to think: is this a real business plan, or is this some goals without actual like time targets and deadlines for me to be able to actually achieve these things? You know, I see a lot of people they set goals, but they don't have any deadlines. You know, see if I want to achieve something, I got to say, hey, I want this by this time, and that creates the urgency framework for you to be able to actually go and accomplish those things. So then you actually have a deadline attached to it because. Imagine this. Imagine if you were a kid and I was like your dad, right? And I was like, hey, Jacob, go, go clean your room. And you're like, when do I have to have it clean by, by the end of the day? When are you going to clean your room? At the very end of the day. At the very, very fucking end of the day. But if I was like, hey, have it clean in the next 15 minutes, you get it cleaned. So a, lo- a lot of times we have these goals that we set out that we could get done in a much shorter time frame, which is what we teach on is compressing time frames, just simply by putting a deadline and keeping yourself accountable by recognizing the fact that you have to get something done in a certain time frame, which is okay. for all my sales guys that want to hit their sales targets. This is why all these salespeople hit their goals at the very end of the month instead of figuring out what do I have to do in my hour, in my day, in my week to be able to have that kick-ass month and make the money I want to make. But let's take this in a, conver- in a, in a direction of like um, like business plan. Like what are some of your goals, uh, like your business plan, your goals? What are some some themes and some things that you want to carry into 2024 for yourself? Well, I mean, so me, me personally, so in the next, I, I, I mean, I, I'll keep some of the things vague because obviously, you know, there's some things in the Elliott group, you know, we just can't just, you know, put out to the world. But uh, my, my biggest one, uh, which is, is what I call uh, critical, like critical success, is if I don't hit this, then the month was just complete mission failure. But if I hit this and I miss a couple of the other ones, then it's still critical like it was the biggest critical task that means the year was still a win all of these were just like additives and extras um for me it's to be able to put 100,000 a month new of uh on contracts inside yep. of the Elliott group so that be like you know with our automotive teams with you know our solar real estate you know all these other teams out there and uh the way that I'm, I'm truly going to do this is I've, I've got a pretty good network now but I'm going to go back into that network go be able to just flood the market with an excess of value. And then I want to, you know, I, as I always say that I learned from coach Burt, that was something that was very game changer. Like if you're a salesperson and you deal with referrals, like say this, if you have, if you're in a position to provide additional value at no cost, say this, I like to fight for those that fight for me. If I'm going to fight for your team to become successful, I want you to fight for me to be successful as well. So who's a couple people that you know that you could refer me. So then that way I can give them the same level of value that I've mm-hmm. given you here today. And we can just continue to do more. And the more that you do it for me is the more that I want to do it for you. And obviously, as anything goes, when you start to win more, don't you get paid more? Yes. Okay, great. Well, I just want to see us both get paid. And so for me, it's to be able to go back into that 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 network that I have of people and be able to provide as much valuable like information as possible, take care of their teams, and be able to push just a little bit harder. And the core principle of that, I think 70% of it is going to be automotive. Because those are my people, that's a business that I know very well. And then 30% is going to be in the entrepreneurial and, and other business aspects. And then of that 100000 on contract, I want all of that to be like teams. And then I have a goal for a new amount, which is 30000 of uh, like inner, like Andy's inner circle and, and inside of that and the people that are partaking in, in that group. But that, that'll be a very easy one. I'm trying to hit that one in four months and do that four times over. So yeah. then that way when I break down or – Three times over, my bad. And then be able to do that so I, I can set up this plan that will allow me a dependable and more reliable success. Because the one thing that I really wish that I had in 2023 that I, that you know, I, I, I'm i going to have this year, and then most likely even more so, not most likely, absolutely, in, in next year, is I want to be able to move laterally without feeling like I'm missing anything. You know what I mean? Like, have the ability and freedom to move laterally. So, I'm not showing up thinking like, oh, I got to I gotta get on the phone today to make a dollar. No, no, no. Like, there's th- like, yes, do I still want to sell? Do I still want to close? Do I still want to provide value? And if you guys are watching this and you don't like the fact that I just said sell, I mean, too bad. Sorry. I'm a sales guy and I'm a coach and I speak. So, And, and by the way, before you finish that, I just want to also add on to that. If you're not, like, directly making – like sales, like you're on the phone or you're in commission. I mean, you're watching the Young Closer podcast, so like you can't be offended by well, selling if well, you're if watching you're, Young if Closer you're not podcast. Closing, but if you're not, closing, but you're always selling. You are no. If you're not, if you're not closing, you just take out the C and that's what you are. 
Young losers. Young losers. Dude, you know what's so funny, though? But, like, look at, so, just for <laughs> half for half of a second. <laughs> That's a clip. Bro, Tony Robbins. Tony <laughs> Robbins is a life coach. Yeah, he sells. But he also has, a, like, a sales training program. Why? Because everything is influence. Yeah. Right? Like, you're, you're you're always you. selling. You're either selling people to want to do something with you or not do something with you. The stuff that you're posting is either convincing people to want to follow you, not follow you, uh, like, the pizza that you're making, whether you got a pizza shop, if it tastes good, you're selling them on coming back. And if the you're service. single, well, guess what? The clothes you wear, the hygiene, the, the athleticism, the way you present yourself is either going to influence the person that you want to be with, right? And it's going to influence, like, the person that wants to be with you. So if you want some Mac Dimes, okay, you got to have some Mac Dime influence. I'm excited for 2024, though. Dude, it's 20- going gonna, it's gonna to be kick-ass, you know? Dude. I, I'm going to blow the fuck up with my brand, like... Not just not just like social media videos, not just like YouTube videos, but like like going back to those goals, dude. I will be on twenty podcasts plus this year. Well, we've already knocked off one, so there's 19. number one and ten stages. I'm calling my shot for me right I'm now. I'm gonna call my shot I, right now because I'm, I'm excited like for this shit. I'm I'm gonna I'm be riffraff. I'm gonna blow up and act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, but no, man. Like twenty twenty four is go- it's. I, I, I listen to a lot of Patrick Bet David, which, by the way, guys, uh, Patrick Bet David is confirmed to be speaking down here at the Master Culture Seminar July 27th of 2024. So if you're watching this, number one, you're a big Patrick Bet David fan, a big Andy Elliott fan. We host an event out here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Guys, here's what I want you to do. I want you to shoot me a text at 501-504-4835 and literally put pay PBD. All right, just put PBD, and I'm going to know exactly what it is. And then what we'll do is we'll give you guys information about what it looks like to be able to come down, come attend the event. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but PBD sold PHP for $230 million. He's got Valuetainment. We got Andy just dominating the space, killing it. So it's two Goliaths coming into attack and just destroy mediocrity and any type of excuses. So some crazy stuff is going down in 2024. Nah, fuck that. Text me. No, uh, don't, don't. If no, you, I'm just yeah, yeah. Or text him. Hey, listen, if you're watching this because you like Danny, text him, okay? But if, if you're watching this because you like the podcast. Text, One thing I respect about Andy so much is I've watched this dude, like, everybody knows him as the as the sales trainer, as the guy that's going to go out and close the deals, motivate people, uh, show them their new level. But one thing I've watched this guy, he's he's just an absolute, and it seems so basic to me, but, like, as I watch it, he's gotten himself into every single room that he's wanted to get into, every single relationship that he wants to get into. And one thing I've always noticed, especially with these uh, with these bigger players, and it starts to compound and get easier as you move up the ranks in the game, but it's just like I'll tell the, the ground-level guy, you got to pay to play. Like, just straight up, bro. Like, it's so simple. Bro, like, people people the, don't want to listen to me the, when I'm like, hey, you got to pay to play to get in the room to come to the seminar at that initial investment, right? I'm not even I'm not even talking about you paying to come out to an event or anything. I'm just saying how Andy's got himself into rooms is he's paid to get in front of people. He's paid to partner with people. He's initiated those uh, relationships to be able to get in the same room uh, and initiate and start off that relationship. And then guess what? The tables turn because he brings so much value back the other way that he starts stacking these IOUs with these other people so they feel like they owe him one. And that's how you create a real relationship is that he now, in a sense in a sense, has leverage over this person that he then wanted to get in front of, now has leverage over because he's got his foot in the door and now has more uh, influence and value back the other way. Not in a bad way, but in a good way of like, I feel like I owe you something, right? If I bring over, it's like Thanksgiving dinner. If I got Thanksgiving laid out and, you know, someone brings, you know, they bring some corn, someone brings cornbread, but then you got a family that brings the turkey, the cornbread, the freaking sweet potatoes, everything. It's like they've brought everything to the table. They're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. they brought the whole Thanksgiving. He gets a seat at the table to eat. He gets a seat. And, like, no, like, and, and, and the cool thing is, is, like, I, I've, obviously, like, me and you are, are some of Andy's first hires. You know, we had the, the twins, then us. And then, dude, the deal is, is every single time Andy's called a shot, like, when we started with Bradley, and then next thing you know, PBD and Rob Bailey and, and you know, Ryan Pineda and everybody who Andy has done something with, he called the shot. And he did it in a fraction of the time because he came in with a clear and concise plan of what's it going to take to actually be in the room at the right time and be a player in the room. Because there's a guy, like, I'm going to be honest, 
there's somebody watching this that's like, oh well, how do I get how do I get you know, you know noticed by you know Danny? How do I get noticed by Andy? You know, how do I get noticed by one of the guys on the team? And then they're gonna come in, they're gonna be like, they're gonna come in and do a general admission ticket. Which is like, hey, it's great. Like if you want to be in the room, soak up information, that's what you're there to do. But if you have an ulterior motive, which not always negative, okay? Ulterior motives aren't negative. Like, yes, you came there to learn, you came there to grow. But if like you're trying you have to have an get, opportunity. Yeah, if you're looking for that opportunity, like you've got to stand out from the crowd because mm-hmm. either you're standing out or you know, you're being cast aside. Like, if you don't stand out, you're you're cast aside. I mean, just go anywhere in life. Like, I can't walk into uh into a restaurant and then just want to be you know treated differently because you know I showed up in like they've been like me showing up to Dominic's right Dominic's Steakhouse where you got to have a freaking reservation. I showed up in basketball shorts looking like a Madam Sandler straight walking around in Hollywood. Yep. You know what I mean? Like they're not gonna they're not gonna be like, oh, how are you doing, Mr. Hagerman? I think like, dude, you, there's a dress code. You got to bounce. You know what I mean? But like, so you got, you got to set yourself up for the opportunity to be noticed differently than everybody else. And pay to play is definitely, uh, people don't like to hear it, but it's the truth. Um, it's a, I'm sorry guys, once again, it's a capitalist society. It's a free market. You have a hundred percent free reign on to win, fail, try, and be able to do it again. You have total control over that in your life. And so the deal is, is guess what? In a capitalist market, we pay attention to those that, Pay the money, or or we can take this other way. So you can either pay to play and pay the pay the person to get in front of them, pay to get in the room, pay for the partnership, whatever that may be, or you pay yourself to be able to have the skill sets, the audience, and the business for us or for whoever you're trying to get in front of to actually want to do something with you because of now at the point that you're at, There's you've brought congruency. equal, you've brought equal value, you've brought something of value other than currency, whether that be relationships, your brand, um, so on and so on. Yeah, now, now there's now there's congruency, yeah. and it's e- it's easy to mesh. And well, I will I will say this. Obviously, at the end of the day, that's the that's the long road. Most people aren't going to take that road of putting in so much work and spending so much time, money, effort, you know, and energy on being able to build their value up to that point. Like that's a very small percentage of the population. Most people are looking like, oh, like I want to do a podcast with Andy. Okay, well I'm just gonna go pay him to show up on my podcast because he gets views. Most people are gonna do that, which is cool. Like money, I'm, money is allows you to take the express lane when when there's a lot of toll roads. Okay, mm-hmm. like money will allow you to do it, which is why like hey listen like if you're a young closer, well that's why I'm trying to you know tell you guys hey get trained, increase your value, be able to become great at what you do, so then that way you do have the money, so then that way you can forego a couple of roadblocks, and you do have opportunities that most people won't be able to have. Like, if you pay if, if you pay Andy to, sh- to speak on your stage, doesn't Andy bring a bigger crowd in attention? Yes, absolutely. And so the deal is, like, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about, I'm all about people, like, becoming financially, like, financially, like, just stupidly successful, so then that way you don't even have to think about it no more. Like like your business plan goes like, hey, listen, like I have a couple of goals, I have a couple of maneuvers that I need to make, a couple of moves that are, you know, very critical for the business. And then if anything else comes up, like we're good. Yep. That that's winning to me. That's that's straight freedom. But waking up and going, Oh, I don't know if I can pay pay my rent this month, that's that's hell on earth. Let me give everybody some game real quick. Yeah, give so, me, give, give, give me some game. I actually have a video dropping all this. I've dropped the I've dropped a Instagram reel on this already, but you want to set your goals in time frame targets. So it's very simple, very simple. But most people they look at their plan, it's just like goals, right? But if you do this, you'll have like a hundred percent higher chance of hitting your goals <laughs> versus not having it. Which is setting hourly targets, daily targets, weekly targets, monthly, and then yearly. Well, I thought most if I people just posted New Year New Me on my Instagram story. I just when. So most people do, you know, New Year, New Me, <laughs> fucking don't show up to the gym or don't, don't start stacking the goals. But it's so simple. Like most people only set yearly or monthly goals. But what's gonna get you to those two is your weekly, your daily, and your hourly. Show me your hour. Show me your day. Show me your week. What are the results that you've gotten? Well, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So if you had a low performance week last week, you're gonna have a low performance generally the next week unless something changes. Yeah, it's so simple. And then you got to look at these other areas inside of your business plan. So you break it down into timelines, and then you break it down um, into these sections. So you got business goals, right? You got financial goals, 
like how much do I want to save? How much do I want to make? How much do I want to invest? So on. Your business goals is like, what do I want to, do I want to build a brand? Do I need this connection? Do I need this system? Then you're going to have your health goals. Where do you want to be on your health? Most entrepreneurs, they just don't pay attention to their health, right? What are your health goals? Um, and then you want to look at what is your relationship and family goals? And then last one, uh, spiritual goals. And not even just like, hey, do you believe in God? Do you show up to church? But like, are you staying tapped in to good people and good energy? You know, like, are you around the right people? Do you need to kick out some people from coming into this new year? Do you need to add some people in? Most people's circle of influence is generally what holds them back. You know, I was talking to this guy. I was actually talking to Zip on the phone. Oh, yeah. And um, he was like, hey, man, uh, you know, dude, I'm starting this business, da 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 And we're talking about it. And I was like, man, you need to move. Like, you need to get out of, like, if you're going to start something new and big and you want to, like, really blow it up, like, you need to move outside of your, your city and your town. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, that's so crazy because I was thinking about that. You know, because we want to create a new environment. It's like wanting to, it's like if you were a little fish in fish tank and you want to, like, you got, you, you have these walls around you. It's hard to escape that, you know, but if you're in a big old ocean, you're in a big old uh, body of water, you're free to kind of swim and become whoever you want to become. No, 100%. I mean, that's, I tell people all the time, dude, you, like, your environment's important. Like, your, your environment's everything. Like, I, I, I've, I mean... From, from how I was raised, I mean, for any of you who are wondering, just go to episode one. But, <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm to the point, like, for me, like, my environment, like, my, my, my peace, my focus, my discipline, my conversations, my enjoyment, like, around people, it's just gotten to the point where it's, like, I don't want to say, like, I've become an asshole, but, like, if I really don't, like, enjoy talking to you or being around you, I'm past the point of just entertaining that conversation and trying to are you just be calls? friends. I'm not shysty. It's not on sales calls. Sales calls is different because these are people that are like, that's my job, right? Like, it's my job no, to take I'm, somebody from their I'm, mindset no, where talking, they're at now. I'm about nobody. Like, like there, there, there's obviously, like, there's people in, in my life, you know, that I've, like, in the past life, like, you know, old old friends and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I don't respond to them. You know, straight, nah. You know, if they call, nah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you're out. Like, I'm sorry. You know, well, like, it's oftentimes, it, they'll call and... I already know that they want something. Oh, every time. Like, if I haven't talked to you within the last 30 days, like, we're not really friends. We're just, like, good acquaintances. And that's cool, right? You're going to have people that are just good acquaintances inside of your life. Or maybe you're doing business or doing something I, in that I, sense. I have a question because I actually I want to stick to this. I want to have, have a little follow-up. When it comes to your, your circle of influence, the people that you keep around you, what are some of the ways that you go, like, okay, this person can stay, this person has to go? Like, what's your what's your line of thinking? Just their energy. Like, I think energy and intention. What is your energy around me? Do you ask, when I ask about your day, do you also ask about mine? Is it selfish intent or is it is it like a joint relationship? Like, you're actually uh, having the intention for, like, my goodwill. Like, is there both things? You know, so I think... Energy, like just the vibes that you get around somebody, just does it does it flow? Does it not flow? Are their interests aligned with my interests, or are they completely aligned? Right, the hobbies that I have, the hobbies that you have, if they're totally different. Like if you're a fisher, right, and I like football, then like when we go together to have a conversation, if you're only talking about fishing, I'm only talking about football, then how the fuck am I supposed to connect with you? You know, and so just a general kind of overview, but just energy and then your intention. A lot of people just have they have the wrong intentions. Um, just to either piggyback off of you or to, you know, they don't have the intention to provide anything. Hmm. I like it. Even if it's, I don't, I don't even care about money. You could not have a lot of money and still be in my circle as long as you have loyalty, good energy, and the right intentions. Meaning, like, you also bring good energy to the table. Not financially, not something, but you're always, you know, looking out for me and you always have good things to say as long as you're positive, like, bro, we're good, you know? I like it. I like it. What about you? Well, for for me, it's simply it's just how, like when I talk to you, how do I leave the conversation? Like, what's my emotions when I leave the conversation with you? Like, do it like because there there's times, and I, I I'm sure you've probably heard me do this. I get off the phone, so I'm like, damn, I love that guy. You know what I mean? And then there's sometimes I get off the phone, and I'm like, you know what I mean? And so it's like my my audit is it's it doesn't happen once a year; it happens often. Where it goes, like, how do you, like, how do you offboard me off the phone or out of a conversation or, you know, 
in, in any type of room that I'm in. Like, if I leave the room and I go, dude, that was a waste of my time. Okay, well, then I'm never going to go back to that room because it's stupid for me to go try again. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like running into a brick wall. Okay, running into it twice isn't going to make the wall any weaker, and you're going to miraculously go through it. No, you're you're going to hit it even harder, and you're just going to be in more pain, and you're you're what I like to call an asshole for even trying again. And so, like, I just go like, how do I how do I leave the conversations? How do I leave the phone call? How do I leave the room? How do I leave? Like, what 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 are the internals that I feel when I'm around that person, and when when I finally get done? Because like in the moment, like, dude, it could all be fun, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and then you leave, you go. Yeah, I didn't like that. Wow, okay. And then, done. What I'll do sometimes is I, I'll give people an opportunity. So, even if somebody doesn't have maybe the correct energy, it's it, it's not necessarily, like, their fault, right? So, but if we're having a conversation, oh, man, the market sucks and this is going on, I could, it presents me an opportunity to challenge their way of thinking to see if they believe if what they're saying is the correct way of thinking or if it's just the state that they're in. A lot of times people can just be in a bad state. There's often times that like I'll be negative, but I won't catch it. But I'll just think, oh, that's not that's not really like who I am and who I align with. But if you give people the opportunity to correct it and they correct themselves, oh, you're right, man. You know, just just been a rough day. Cool. What's been what's been happening? It gives you an opportunity to kind of go a little bit deeper. And also too, it kind of changes the positioning of the conversation because if you generally go into a conversation and you're not enjoying it. Most of the time, it will mean that either it's, it's so negative that, like, it just sucks, or on the other side is that other person is talking more than you and putting in bad energy. And if you can flip it to where you challenge them, then it gives you the permission to start kind of talking and flip that conversation back. It's what, oh, it's yeah. what I see Andy do all the time. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Well, like, naturally, yes. Anybody who has the situational awareness will do that. Mm-hmm. But then there's also, you try that, and then it's just like... There's just no hope. You know what I mean? It's like, if it's if there's no hope, I'm sorry, but I'm not tossing. Like I'm not gonna jump in the water to to drown with you. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. You gotta take the life jacket if we're throwing it. Well, you 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 gotta you gotta swim and you've got to take the life jacket because I'm I'm gonna toss you a life jacket. But if you don't put it on, I'm sorry. Like it's it's. What would you tell people that if they want to figure out like if they're going through this, if they're that person? How would you, what advice would you give them to self reflect if they're that negative person that can't get into the right circles, the right rooms, the right conversations? They're trying to figure out how do I, how do I level up, right? Even inside the dealership, people are trying to figure out like, how do I befriend my managers? Like how me and you are talking right now about auditing circles, the reason why they are the way that they are is because they haven't audited theirs. Like, who are they around? Who, what are they putting, like, what are they attaching to? Like, are they emotionally attached to somebody who's negative? Are they around in a negative environment, right? Like, I can say this. I come up from, you know, was born and raised in a very negative environment. You know, like drug addict parents, abused, poor. I mean, like everything. And guess what? Like, I'm I'm happy all the time. Like, I, I, I wake up, I slap myself in the chest. I'm like, dude, got to put some air in these boys today. I'm, I got opportunity. And that's it. Like, I, I got opportunity. God, thank you. Like I'm grateful every moment that I that I'm awake because I know at one moment I've I've seen it with my own pops, I've seen life be taken yep. in an instant, and the deal is is I'm never gonna let that be taken for gratitude, and so Granted. if if you're if you're a naturally negative person it's because, I mean the your cup is being diluted. I mean if you yep. if you put a cup of water if I put a cup of water on this table and we shoot a podcast episode it's not gonna be more toxic. When, when we get out of here and I take a sip from it, what's going to have to happen? There's an outside force, the catalyst, that's either going to put some toxin, some strychnine in it, that's going to make it toward that's poisonous. Nothing natural is just going to be like sitting there and then just be negative for no reason. So like if you're naturally that person, it's because somebody is poisoning you. A business doesn't fail because it just did everything right. Somebody poisoned it. A relationship doesn't fail because... Everybody did everything right. No, somebody poisoned it. I say this. Like, in a relationship, there's only two people that can ruin a relationship. You know who it are? You know who they are? It's the ones in it. There's only a group of people that can ruin a business. It's the ones that are employed by it. It's true. There's only one person that can ruin a relationship with God. You know who it is? It's you. It's you. Because I know one thing. I- I've turned my back on the man. He ain't turned his back on me once. And so the deal is, dude, there's so much good, but you got to realize that you're part of the problem. 
you got to eliminate, either get out of the problem or eliminate the problem. And that's, that's advice for, for anybody in any business, any career. I don't, I don't care if you're 17 years old and you're still in high school. If you don't like the way you feel when you're around your friends, dude, like there's, I'm going to tell you this, guys. There's a lot of people in this world. What is there, 8 billion people now? Okay? You need a, a solid 5 to 10 people to, that's really going to help you, like, become the best version of you. You think that the solid 5 to 10 are everybody that's in your hometown? Really? My solid 5 to 10 are people, every single one of them, nobody was raised where I was raised. Like you, you're in Virginia. I was born and raised in Indiana, Arkansas, and then we met when we got to Oklahoma. Oh, you weren't in Oklahoma, but when we when we got to Arizona. Yep. The deal is, is the Macklins, they're from Denver. Big Ryan, Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Like Andy, Oklahoma. Like Jacqueline, Oklahoma, San Jose. And so like the deal is, is dude, my people that I keep close to my chest, that are that are my environment changers, they're not they're not from my hometown. Like, do I love those people? Do I wish them massive prosperity and that they live a life that is filled with wins? Yes. But if we're not walking the same vision and we're not driving down the same highway of like here's my goals, well then we just become traffic. And I'm trying to get out of traffic jams. Because there's there's so much else to this life that at the end of the day, dude, it's it's easy to get distracted. Like I know my biggest thing for twenty three is Dude, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of them. Like, there's ob- there's things that in the, in this world that I really really want that like I'm the the God hasn't provided it for me yet. Am I impatient? Yes, I'm I'm one of the most impatient patient people that you'll ever meet in your entire life. Like any person I've ever you know been in a relationship with, they're like, hey, like you like you, you give you extend a lot of grace to people that I really love and care about. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm patient. Like I understand that like I'm a work in progress. Um. I'm going to be 24 this year. I know I'm young. I'm, I'm going to be 24. But it's taken me all 23 years of this to become who I am. I got some grace for me because mm-hmm. I knew that I was putting in some work. But if we're not on the same mission, I have no patience for that because that then that's just t- 100% roadblock and traffic jams. and I'm out. So for my naturally negative people out there, it's okay. Okay? It's not like it's the end of the world and then there's just no help for you. Listen. I, I, I've said it before in the past. As long as, long as like, ah, this is a great saying. I, I said this to somebody earlier on the phone that was uh, really struggling. I said, hey, man, listen, I was like, do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, the deal is, is you're still in the fucking tunnel, okay? There's light at the end of the tunnel. That's your hope, okay? There's light at the end of the tunnel. As long as you can see that, you're good. But the deal is, is, if it's still dark around you, you're still in the fucking tunnel. You're not out yet. So stop resting on your laurels because you see hope down the road, okay? Now it's time to go harder to go live the life that you want. So, like, for my people out there, hey, listen, there is light at the end of the tunnel. But if you set up shop, you're just in the tunnel. Like, you're in the darkness. You're going to have not the life that you want, and I'm sorry. But the deal is is it's time to go harder now. If if And if you're struggling even further where you don't see that light, well, guess what? You Did you listen to this podcast? Yes, well, if you listen to this, you ain't dead, okay? Because I know for a damn certain I don't have any dead people or ghosts watching this, okay? It's, it's only people with heartbeats to share and air in that chest. That's it. So the deal is, is you still got hope. You still got opportunity. One thing I, I like that Bradley says is he talks a lot about how just like success and making money is not that hard. And it's almost an opposite perspective of, of like Andy's take on it is – like, grind, hustle, and, like, it's going to fucking suck. And I have both perspectives. It's, like, the devil and the angel on both of your shoulders. Oh, yeah. Or, like, I have, like, a, <laughs> I have like a mixed character between, between, like, both of them, you know. And I agree that you have to have that type of mentality day in and day out, like, uh, to, to grind, and it is going to fucking suck. But it's really not that bad. It was like when Bradley talked about like he was homeless, but he was at the fucking beach. Yeah, he's living in the And he's like, he was like, it wasn't really that bad. Like I didn't think I was like homeless. And you know, and for me, like I look at the life that I had, the story that I could have told myself that it was so difficult that I grew up practically, you know, without parents because they were both working and they were divorced and all of this shit happening. Instead, my perspective, even from like a child was that like, Dude, life was fun. It wasn't that hard. I always found a way to be able to get what I wanted. Um, and as, as long as you just set out and you are just determined for what you want, it's not motivation, but it's just like 
It's just so yeah, I like, it's I like so motivation. fucking anybody who's simple. Like, anybody who like goes like, oh, motivate. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I kind of like motivation because at the end of the day, like motivation, it's it's not what's gonna fuel you for the entire race, but it'll, it'll, it's like the the starter to your engine. You know, it'll it'll turn 100%. the car over, but you can't really drive far with it. Motivation gets you going. Discipline keeps, keeps you going. going. One hundred percent. It's like I like a little bit of motivation. Some people need to be motivated. Like right now, like I hope some people are watching this and going, "Damn, you know what? He's right." Like, hey, listen, I'm sorry, but you can't wallow in self pity for the rest of your life. Like I say, this the murder of my father was the greatest, the greatest worst thing that ever happened to me. Simply because if that didn't happen when I was twelve years old, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have moved to Arkansas. I wouldn't have met Andy. I wouldn't be in Arizona right now. I wouldn't be at this podcast. So like that. That's my catacl. Like my cataclysmic event that like altered my life that I'm like now I'm like well if I had the option to do it again or stay in Indiana and become who I was supposed to become there uh yeah I'm going through it again sorry it is yeah, what it is I, I agree I don't think that if my dad wouldn't have passed away that I wouldn't have become the man I am today I think it it maybe would have happened right eventually but I don't think it would have happened like it is it now I would happened. I wouldn't be able to to tell the story that I'm telling right now it's forming these next couple of years, oh, yeah. you know, and dude, that's that's what's important for like for me to always remember is like the how do, how do how do I say this? The person I am now, I've already achieved goals that my past self said would make me happy. The person you know I it's so funny. The person I am today. I've I've already achieved goals that my past self said. Oh, that that that'd be everything to me, and I've already done it. And now I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, well, there's more to do. There's more to do. Yes, there's always more to do. Okay, like I'm sorry. There's always more to do. It's not, guys. Hey, listen, it's not over. You can only sip margaritas on the beach for so long. But at the end of the day, like, I've always wanted to like, and a lot of it was, you know, money and stuff like that because I I grew up without it. Got the money. I was like, oh, I want to be able to wear suits to work. I got a shit ton of suits. I want to have nice clothes. I got them. I want a nice car. Got it. Nice house. Got it. And for me, now it's like, okay, let's go four or five stages deeper so then now I can set my goals for something that I know is not going to lead me to happiness but to fulfillment. Yeah, you have to remove. See, I've gone through this myself, but also see people stuck in it for most of their lives, if not the entirety of their life, like, majority of the population and like i'm just i'm fucking grateful that i've figured this shit out at the age of 25 years old you're 25 now 25 when did you turn 25 december 16th 25 baby that's right damn Dude, I'm, I'm 24 in july you're gonna go to, you're gonna come to turks and caicos with me i'm down you gonna come we gotta come but going going back to this like they have to remove the goal setting associated with happiness because whether that be, uh, oh, if I make my first six figures or once I get that car, you got to remove the once I get here mentality because once you get there, you still have the same person that you are now just with a different result. And so you have to learn to enjoy the moment that you're in, who you're becoming, the process, the people that you're around um, because the, the happiness is in like, is in the process. The happiness is in being present. Why Why do you see both ends of the spectrum? The people that have all of the money, the multimillionaires, billionaires that commit suicide, have all this depression, and then you see, you know, the, the bottom, the people in poverty are obviously, you know, upset and, 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 and not filled, not happy because they're just trying to get by. You know, they're in a scarcity type of mindset versus this other person who may have everything in the world. Well, it's because they've lost what the meaning of happiness is. Happiness is just... Whatever definition you give it. Happiness happiness could be, oh, once I get that million, millions going to make me happy. Well, happiness isn't like once I get it. That's not how it works. Happiness is just you being present, staying connected, Outside of money, Danny, and, what is and your, having fun. Outside of money, what, what is your definition of it? I'll share mine. My definition of happiness, I would just say, you know, living a fulfilled life, uh, achieving things that you set out to achieve. Right? Like It's not like... The car doesn't make me happy, but knowing that I have the ability to manifest what I want and then go and get it makes me feel somewhat like makes me feel powerful, yeah, right? 100%. And I think that that power of knowing that if I want something, I can go and get it makes me feel happy because I have that confidence within myself. 
You know, so I would say uh, confidence. You know, I enjoy like laughing, having a good time. You know, I think just enjoying your your experience and appreciating time uh, on this planet. You know, that's what's up, dude. You don't know mine. What's yours? Mine's just have a have a beautiful family, wife, kids, and a Christ and a Christ centered home. That's a like. Truly, the, the, my ultimate level of fulfillment, and I, I, I don't think I think I shared a little bit on the podcast, but um, the moment that I know that I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I already know that I'm gonna break down and cry as a man, and like just know that like I did everything right, is one day like getting like be down at the office, you know, you pull up to the house, you know, you park your car in the garage, turn the car off. Next thing you know, you open the door and you, and you hear a little kid screaming, "Daddy's home!" You know, you when did you in. get there? Hmm? When did you When did you get there? What do you mean? Was that your mindset? From 16, or was that your mindset developed within the last year or two? That's been my... Because your definition of happiness changes over as you grow. Oh, yeah. You know? My definition of fulfillment. fulfillment. You know, knowing that I've lived a, a, a purposeful life. That's always been something that I've always wanted to be able to prove to myself. Um, because, obviously, I grew up with... Like, my mom now, me and my mom have a very close relationship. Like, I, I've done a lot to uh, repair that. And, um, you know, like, kind of understand her perspective. Like, she was widowed, like... You know, she was kind of fucking, like, she had, a, she had, it was a little bit rough. Like, I appreciate my mom for doing what she did. But my whole thing in life is, like, be able to prove that, like, I can do things that, like, because no other Hackerman has lived past 47, male. Every one of them is either, you know, overdosed or was killed. So it's, like, crazy. Um, none of them have ever been, like, financially literate. None of them have really had, you know, beautiful families. None of them were ever surrounded by God. And me, I want to be able to be the person that can start a new generational cycle of being able to have things like actually like make sense. Like I'm, I'm blessed that I went through like, you know, the struggles, I guess you would say like a broken family. So I know what a good family would feel like and how to go build it. But it's always been on my heart that I want to be able to show up and have all the money to be able to go on vacations and have experiences and be able to do that. You know, be able to put my kids in a great school, be able to have them have the nice clothes and like be able to truly provide and then be able to, you know, not be golden handcuffed and be like, oh, hey, son, I'm missing your basketball game because I got to show up to work. And so, like, my true level of fulfillment, like, that's that stuck with me since I was, like, 14, 15 because I was in the man of the house, you know, taking care of my moms and my two sister, and, um, you know, working and, you know, helping with bills and everything like that. And so that's always been on my heart, but it's it's been, it's been a lot more prevalent here in the last, you know, year and a half, two years because I've now achieved a lot of money. Now, do I want to make more? <laughs> yeah, I haven't even warmed up the stove. You know, like, the the, the water isn't even boiling yet. Like, you, you still dip your finger in it. It's cool. But I've, I've, I've really achieved some pretty amazing things that I've, I've set out to do that, like, I'm, I'm not thinking. I'm like, okay, I know that I have the money part down. I just, I know that I just need to commit harder, get more discipline, get a better plan, be able to get better processes, and be able to just do more of what I've done now and I will be okay, you know what I mean, and just set out to do more, and now that I know that I can take care of the money, for most people, like, some people have beautiful families with no money, and some people have all the money with no family, I want to be able to be somebody who can have both, so I figured out the money portion to a certain extent, obviously I want to make more, but now I want to figure that out, and uh, I know that that's kind of crazy for somebody, oh, you're 23, like, you know, somebody was, uh, like I say, they didn't name, they're like, Jacob, you're 23 years old, bro, stop rushing, and I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to deal with all this shit, like, I'm not trying to go through all of, you know, all of the trials and all of this, to go through Scottsdale. Like, dude, I'm out. Like, I don't want to go to Old Town. I don't want I don't want to do all that, dude. I just want to live a life where I go to church on Sundays, you know, have brunch, you know, make some sales calls, grind myself, you know, you know, like as hard as I can when I'm here at the Elliott Group. But when I go home and I got my four walls, I got a beautiful family that, you know, I know that I'm doing everything in the world to be able to push and, you know, lead those people up to be even better people than I could ever be. And... You know, I, I got to thank my mom for that. I got to thank, you know, Brian for that. Brian's my real father, for those who don't know. You know, he's killed. But, um, yeah, like, that's just something that, like, I've set out for myself. And I know that it's, uh, it's, it's a weird topic. I've never really explained it in that depth. But that's something that, like, I truly, like, w- when I'm waking up in the mornings and, like, I don't want to show up to work because, like, I feel sick or something's happening or and not like I don't want to show up to work. I just don't want to, like, fucking, you know, like, be in the grind, you know, because, like, Everything is just like you just like feel like hell or waking up at five a.m. going to There's the gym. There's fucking days where you don't want to get yeah, up. Exactly. That's fucking reality. Of shit. Yeah. There's that's days reality. where you're like, man, fuck, I just want to yeah, f- relax. And like th- 
that right there, like just the thought of coming home and hearing, you know, you know, like a, you know, in the be- like obviously yes, in a beautiful house with a nice car, but like what what I see is like I'll have the family, but then the house will be shitty, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want a shitty house. You know what I mean? But like I'm like, if but if I wake up right now and I get up and I start getting after it, my vision, because now I'm in the motion of like creating this vision. I can I can believe and achieve and like dream of like a bigger, nicer, more beautiful house with more decorations, more, you know, luxurious garage and everything like that. So like the level of action that I'm putting into, it literally like the 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 dream will will shift towards like what size of action, like, you know, like a fucking rinky dinky house in Phoenix mm-hmm. versus a beautiful freaking crib and, you know, in Paradise Valley just based on how I'm how I'm grinding it. So yeah, I've never explained it in that uh in that depth on the podcast, I know that, you know, a lot of people are, are probably going to be like, dude, you're 23. Like, what the hell? Like, just go have fun. I don't want to do that. Like, I, I Bro, have, this shit is fun. Bro, like, this, this is, is... Yeah, this is the best fun ever. But, like, I, I have this figured out. Like, I'm going to die in this company. I already know that, you know. I've already found faith. You know, I found found my God, you know. Like, I have everything going right. I'm just going to continue to add to the things that are that are, I want that are right. And that's it. And so... It's, I love the the process of just knowing that, like, I'm in the game now because the person I was before, you know, dropping out of college, just trying, you're not even in the game. I forgot that you dropped out of college. Yeah, dropped out of school, man, delivered Chinese food. Like, I wasn't even in the game. And that feeling of now not only being in the game, right, if we, it's like a game of Monopoly, like, I've been around, I got a few properties, I got, like, I got a good, like, momentum to life. And if I just keep carrying this momentum – you know, I have a good, like you said, I got the money thing figured out. You know, I don't think that I have the money thing fully figured out in, in my perspective. Um, no, not like to a T. Well, for me, for me, like I want to, I want to keep figuring this shit out because I fucking enjoy like just the game, my theory of like the game and moving up the levels, you know, and this is why I talk about like, you know, full circle, like business plan. I like knowing that like, you know, health looks good. I like knowing that, you know, I got social media growing. I have leads coming. I like knowing that, like, you know, have a team that, you know, looks to me. I like knowing that I have sales coming and that I have clients that refer me business. And if I just keep stacking it, it just becomes undeniable, you know, where I'll be at in a few years. If I stack those relationships externally, I deposit internally. Um, and I just keep doing all the things that you would need to have to be able to just be full circle. You know, I don't know any other way to describe it, you know, but if I can have the mental clarity, the fitness, like the saying, health. I like that you keep saying be full circle. Well, it's like, a, dude, it's like a game to me, right? Because I like that. Imagine like, stealing that. Steve imagine that it down. like if you were like Mortal Kombat, right? Like everybody's got like every character has like a weakness and then every character has like their strength. Well, if I know your weakness, I bro, I can take I can take you out. Right, but if I have, if I have uh, every single leg of the table sturdy and strong, you can't fucking knock me over. You're gonna have to like become so big and Goliath. About, I don't know if you know anything about me and tables, but uh. <laughs> Jacob likes <laughs> snapping tables, bro. <laughs> oh, throw back to that. Uh, but no, dude, that that's no, that's that's everything, dude. Like obviously, yes, like always be learning and staying a student of the game, like. 100%. I think making there's something that everybody on this podcast that is listening needs to cross the threshold. So you need to switch from like, oh, I need to learn this skill set. I need to, I need to, you know, in order to get to this new level. And just adopt the fact that that learning becomes part of you. And once you adopt the fact that like learning is part of you, it's who you are, it's what you do throughout a daily basis, then you start to realize that like this shit's so much more abundant. But most people never get obsessed and truly love learning. They say they do, but they don't, they only, they, they clock in to learn. They clock oh, yeah. in and clock out. Like, I wake up and I love watching YouTube. I love watching podcasts. I love just being able to see what I'm building. And then it just gets really fun, you know, because I know the direction that I'm heading. You know, it's like literally going back to Monopoly. Like, if you see your, your property stacking, you see your cash stacking around the other players around you, you, you fucking know that you're going to win that game because they're going to bankrupt. You're going to have to trade them out. It's just like, it's fun. And, it, and I don't take the... um the angle of like, you know, taking people out, you know, I play my game for me, for my own happiness, not for, and not even for like, you know, I want to do it for the family. I want to do it for the team. Yes. But like, I selfishly do it for me first so I can have the best version of me show up for my family and for the team. 
And I think if I if I can always put me first, I'll able I'll be able to put myself first again for yeah, all these other things. It's kind of like how uh, what Wes Watson said, which I'm I'm a big fan of what he said was it's not how it's who. It's not how it's who. It's who's it gonna have to be to be able to get what you want. And so I mean, I I said uh I was on the I was on the phone earlier. And I was like, hey, man, listen, like, in your life, like, you, you're you a chef and you're baking up this perfect life, okay? And then your finished product is what everybody else gets served, okay? Well, the deal is, what you're doing is that you're cooking up this lifestyle, and if you sh- shitty in and spoil the ingredients, your product, the end result is going to be shitty and spoiled, and then that's what you serve to other people. And so that's the offering that you are to the rest mm-hmm. of the world. And so I was like, dude, listen, like, sometimes, like, it's it's okay to be selfish, Okay, like everybody, like there's. Such it's not even, and not even just okay. It's required. Oh, hundred percent. And selfish is not a fucked up, steal money, be selfish, fuck people over, but be selfish with your time. Be selfish with who's around you. Don't be someone that just gets to fucking be all walked around and uh, just walking through life, walking through situations. Most people just coast through shit. They coast through their job. They coast through their circles. They coast through everything, and they never make decisions because they're too afraid of people saying, "Oh, dude, you're being an asshole. You're being a dick." Well. I'm going to have that come my way. If I'm wanting to pursue something, then, like, I don't really give a fuck what you think about me because I know what I think about me, and that shit's pretty fucking good. Oh, yeah. And the people that matter, as long as they also respect and see a, a glimpse of that same thing. No one's ever going to see 100% of what you see in yourself, but if they can see a glimpse of it, then you're good. Oh, yeah. No, that's it, man. That's it. Man, what a good episode. What a good episode, man. What what piece of advice would you give to the people listening? For for my viewers, man, is guys, listen, it's, it's going going into twenty twenty four, right? They're setting a new new tone. They're soaking up more podcasts. They're plugging in more to the Elliot hey, group. I'm, I'm simply gonna say this: what you got last year in twenty twenty three is, is because of the play that you ran. Okay, like your results from twenty twenty three are based strictly off the play that you continue to run those 365 days. So in 2024, if you want a different result, you're going to have to run some different plays. And if you don't know what kind of plays to run, well, the deal is is that's why there's a coach's handbook. That's why there's mentors. That's why there's things out there that are going to allow you access to new information because new information allows for new action. New action done for a long and continuous period of time creates habits, and habits create demand. So the deal is, is it all starts with new information. And if you don't know where to get new information, find people that are trusted. Obviously, if you made it an hour and two minutes in the podcast, I'd like to say on a whim, maybe out of nowhere, a freaking fairy dust possibility that we're an okay, trusted source of information in your life. Well, the deal is, is who is it that we trust? Well, I trust Andy Elliott first and foremost, and that's the reason why I work with him. That's the reason why I freaking rep him every second that I've got. That's the reason why... He's, you know, uh, the guy got a thousand percent of trust from me and I get it from him. And that's the reason why I try to go so hard for you guys is so then that way you can get exposed to more of him. So new information, run new plays. And if you don't know what type of play to run, well, reach out. I mean, that's that's the only thing that you can do. You know, it's text me 501-504-4835 or hit me on the Instagram at the really uncloser. And let's just talk about running a new play, because if you don't, I mean, you're just going to get what you got last year, and most people are going to live the same life this year that they did last. So if you want to be different, got to run a new play. Danny, what do you got for him? My my piece of advice for people going into 2024 and they're trying to have a, a better them, you know, a better me, you have to look at, like, what did I just, – just so it's so simple. What did you do? Right? Like, the, what the, what's the play – kind of bouncing off what you said. What's the play that you – you ran last year, you know, did you, um, did you get ahead financially? Did you get ahead in your relationship? Did you make the progress you wanted to make? And if you're not making the progress, there's no way that you can be happy with not making progress. So I would tell you, figure out what goals you want to hit, put those deadlines on them. Like I said, in the very beginning of the podcast, and then just go and figure out what do I have to do hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly to be able to hit these yearly goals that you set up for yourself. And just think more abundantly. This shit's not as hard, you know, as you, Make it seem, you know, you can get the job you want to get, you can make the money you want to make, but most people just don't want to realize that they have to start that process because that beginning of the process is the most difficult. If you're not willing to sacrifice one year for what you want, then don't even, don't even try. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just stay kind of where you're at and just enjoy watching and doing whatever you're doing. There's nothing wrong with that life. But if you're wanting to attack this new level that you're in, you have to start with this uh, and create some momentum for yourself. Notice how I said, like, I feel like I'm, I'm in this game. It's because I've created momentum for myself. And I'm nowhere close to who I want to be or, um, or, or I am close to who I want to be, but where I'm going. And so I would tell you, create some momentum for yourself, set some deadlines for yourself, and then just hold yourself accountable. You know, don't be so fucking hard on yourself when, you know, you, you have one day where you sleep in or you have one day that like you maybe don't hit your sales target or one bad month. Just keep the mentality that you've adopted that gave you the momentum, momentum in the first place and don't fucking stop. Keep getting into new rooms that what got you a lot of times what got you where you're at now will also get you a little bit will get you further ahead. Also, it's like a lot of times I see salespeople like oh, I'm bottlenecked here. You know, I'm only making this amount. Well, what got you to this? Okay, where's your day at? Well, could you fit more in? Yeah, yeah, I could fit more in. Well, that could get you double the results that you're already getting if you just do more. So identify, are you already doing more? And if you're doing more, um, sometimes you may need to change the path and, and you run a new play. 100%. But just just keep attacking and, uh, man, stay plugged in with us, man. If you need sure. if you need resources, there's coaches and mentors for a reason, whether that be us, whether that be Andy, whether that be whoever you look up to. If you ask the people that you look up to how they get to where they're at, they got by studying and learning from mentors and, and running the plays that they ran. You don't need to create something fucking new. You just need to do what they've done. You can literally copycat your way into success. It's fucking crazy. Like, so if, if you're trying to struggle to figure out what you're doing, you're just over, you're overthinking. Just okay. copy what somebody's done. So, Danny, drop your, uh, drop your socials. Official Danny Klein on Instagram and official Danny Klein on YouTube. Just dropped it. Show me some love. Show me some follows. We're posting out some yeah, fire on, hey, content. If, if you're one of the young closers, man, reach out, show some love on the comments. You know, be like, "Hey, seeing you on the Young Closer podcast." Let's see if we can't get you guys out there and get get Danny some bigger momentum. Obviously, I'm gonna drop all of his uh, his socials in the description of you know the, the YouTube video and on on podcast on like Apple and everything like that, Spotify. So then that way, you know, he has full access. But guys, I really appreciate you listening. You know, obviously, follow me on Instagram at the Real Young Closer. Hey, listen, this this podcast, I know that it's, it's sometimes it's all about sales, sometimes it's about life, but the deal is is there's people that I see in my life that have massive levels of value to give because they give to me. And so if there's anything that, like, you learned in this episode, like, please, 100%, like, put it to play. Like, we don't just, like, at the end of the day, like, I never thought that I'd be somebody doing a, a fucking podcast. You know, I never did. But I'm, I'm happy that I am somebody that is doing a podcast because now when I think of stuff, I'm like, dude, I got to go learn some new experiences. Otherwise, I'm going to be dull. I'm going to be stale. I'm going to be nobody that nobody wants to listen to. And so you guys push me like I push you. And so there's just a, a whole lot of congruency in, in what we're trying to accomplish here. So I love you guys to death. Y'all keep kicking ass. Y'all keep rocking and rolling. If y'all need anything at all, obviously reach out to me. Reach out to Danny. You know, reach out to your favorite coach in the Elliott group. And let's just go dominate 2024. There's no reason for us to not win at a very high level. So that's all I got, Danny. You got anything else? That's it. Let's become hey. undeniable 2024. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it, bro.